Welcome to this rapid revision video looking at a real breakthrough in medicine, Edward Jenner and the smallpox vaccine. Firstly, let's find out a little bit about smallpox itself. A defeated enemy? Smallpox is, or well was, a very unpleasant and nasty disease. I'm going to show you a picture of a smallpox sufferer now taken a few years ago. I want to say a few years ago, I mean probably about a hundred. It's a bit unpleasant, but it's nothing too bad. Here we can see that this poor victim is covered in pustules or boils caused by smallpox. Even people who survive the disease could be left permanently disfigured by pock marks all over their face. Smallpox killed about 30% of those who caught it, and those who survived were almost always left permanently scarred and sometimes blind. Anyone, rich or poor, young or old, could catch smallpox, and feared it. people feared it as much as the plague. They feared it so much, in fact, that some people had inoculations. They deliberately infected themselves with weakened smallpox. But this could give them the actual disease, and it was actually a very unpleasant process, and it didn't always provide the best coverage either. But people were prepared to take the risk because they feared the smallpox so much. However, in 1979, the disease was declared extinct. So far, it is the only human disease to have been wiped out by medical action. The progress began in 1796, when an English country doctor noticed something interesting about the local milkmaids. Well, let's see what it was all about. Our case study here concerns Dr Edward Jenner and vaccination. Edward Jenner was a rural doctor who was interested in science and nature. He noticed something curious. Local milkmaids had lovely skin and never seemed to get smallpox. He did notice, though, that they seemed to get the much milder disease, cowpox, from working with the cattle. He wondered that if there must be a connection. Perhaps the milkmaids who contracted the cowpox were subsequently immune from smallpox once they had recovered. How could this be? How did Jenner go about it then? He decided to investigate his theory that cowpox infection prevented smallpox. This source, which is an extract from his notes, explains how he did it. James Phipps. I selected a healthy boy of about eight years old. The matter, or pus, was taken from a cowpox sore on Sarah Nelms's hand and inserted on May the 13th, 1796, into the boy by two cuts, each half an inch long. And we can see that being carried out in the artist's illustration here. Sarah Nelms, by the way, was a milkmaid who was currently suffering from the very mild cowpox. On the seventh day, he, that's James Phipps, the test subject, complained of uneasiness. On the ninth, he became a little chilly, lost his appetite and had a slight headache and spent the night with some restlessness. But on the following day, he was perfectly well. In order to prove that the boy was immune to smallpox, he was then inoculated, or indeed deliberately infected, with smallpox pus, but no disease followed. Several months later, he was again inoculated with smallpox, but again, no disease followed. Jenner had proved that James Phipps, through his vaccination, was immune. OK, we'll have to skip over just briefly the fact that this would be really immoral today. How much James Phipps knew about the risk he was in is unsure. But remember that people were prepared to undergo inoculation. So the potential for getting immunity to this terrifying disease may have seemed worthwhile for the boy and his family. So in a nutshell, this is how it worked. Jenner noticed that milkmaids never seemed to contract smallpox if they had previously had cowpox. So he injected a young boy with cowpox. He then infected him with a do dose of smallpox to find that he never contracted the disease. Vacca is the Latin for cow, and therefore vaccination contained cowpox, meaning that the recipient would not contract smallpox, and that's why we call vaccinations vaccinations. It all dates back to the original vacca for cow in Edward Jenner's original cowpox vaccine. So what's this significance or importance? How successful was Jenner's smallpox vaccine? Well, Jenner introduced his smallpox vaccine at the end of the 18th century, but it wasn't widely used right away. Here we can see a graph of the mid-1840s going right the way through to the 1920s. Vaccination laws were first enforced in the late 1860s as people began to understand the disease a bit better. Remember that this is the time of around Pasteur's germ theory and the work of Robert Koch. Here we can see that there's a big spike in the smallpox cases per, per million. That's significant because it actually shows that there was a circulated epidemic at this time. And we shouldn't assume that because the vaccination laws were introduced then, that is precisely why the, there is the spike. It's probably the opposite way around. That spike led people to more strictly 
go for the vaccines. And in fact, the laws were more strictly enforced and people were more likely to take them as there was more of a disease around and people were more scared of it. Once it is strictly enforced, we can see that there is a precipitous drop and unlike previous times, it never really spikes again. Until eventually, as I say, in 1979, the disease was declared extinct. As we've sometimes seen before, though, new ideas often come up against opposition. This is shown by this famous cartoon. Source A is an 1802 cartoon of Jenner giving people his vaccine. It was drawn by James Gilray, a famous cartoonist at the time who took great pleasure in drawing quite grotesque things. The caption reads, The Cowpox, or Pox, or the wonderful effects of the new inoculation, published by the Anti-Vaccine Society. So what's going on here? Is Gilray really an 18th or 19th century anti-vaxxer? Well, it's possible, or maybe this is mocking the people who do fear the vaccine and encouraging people to get it. This is up to you to read into it. However, most of the time I've noticed this being uh, given as an example of genuine opposition. So we'll look at it from that point of view rather than from the point of view of satire. Look closely at the image. You can see people queuing up to come in, showing actually that there's probably some suggestion that it's quite popular. People are given an opening preparation and then they get their cuts on the arm, which is then swabbed with the samples of cowpox. We can see on the wall that there appears to be some sort of painting showing a sacred bull being worshipped. A bit of a play on words there. And we can see that the people who have been recently vaccinated all of a sudden have cows leaping out of boils all over their bodies. Is this realistic? Well, of course it isn't, but it's trying to make a point. For a little bit of practice, we're going to have a quick look at exam style questions here. Although, do bear in mind, I've got specialist exam style advice videos as part of these rapid revision series. Study source A. What can you infer from source A about people's reactions to Jenner's smallpox vaccination? You can structure it like this. I can infer and a detail in the source that tells me this. This is something that you're more likely to do in paper three, but it's a good skill to practice. It can help illustrate what's going on here. So regardless of Gilray's own views on vaccination, this is what we can infer. I can infer that people feared the new vaccination. And a detail in the source that tells me this is the artist has shown people panicking with cows leaping out of their sores. I can also infer that many people took Jenner's vaccination. And a detail in the source that tells me this is even though the image is against vaccination, or at least appears to be, it shows crowds of people queuing to have it. OK, this is going to be quite a big slide, and I know this is a rapid revision video and I'll go through it as quickly as I can. But we've got to address how significant the smallpox vaccine was. I've got to try and do this in one take as well, so wish me luck. There's going to be quite a lot of information will appear on here, so you might want to watch this in full screen and make sure that it's in high definition. And you can pause it at any time to review it. Ultimately, I'm going to show you a series of information cards. These will suggest either that smallpox vaccination was significant or that it wasn't. You can decide which was which, and we'll go through the answers at the end. Part A. So stopping smallpox was actually not new. Inoculation was already being used to prevent smallpox. Inoculation involves spreading pus from a smallpox pustule into a cut on the skin of a healthy person. If the person was lucky, they got a mild dose of smallpox and did not catch it again as they had built up the antibodies against smallpox. Inoculation became big business. For example, the Suffolk surgeons Robert and Daniel Sutton carried out thousands of inoculations. This was successful in cutting deaths from smallpox, and it's not the same thing as vaccination. We then got example B, opposition to vaccines. There was a lot of opposition to vaccination. Some came from inoculators and doctors who were no longer making money by giving inoculations. Other people did not like a treatment linked with animals or they'd heard cases of where it hadn't worked. Others simply didn't want to believe Jenner as he wasn't a London doctor, which is quite snobbish, really. Then part C. Jenner showed the value of scientific method. Jenner had found a way of saving thousands of people from smallpox. His works were an excellent example of using scientific methods of experiment and inquiry, encouraging other scientists to solve medical problems too. Part D. Inoculation had limited impact on smallpox. Inoculation was risky because the person could get a strong dose of smallpox and die or pass on the smallpox to someone else. Vaccination did not have these risks. Most people could not afford inoculation, but Jenner gave his vaccination for free with government help. Fair play. E. Vaccination saved many lives. 
Although vaccination was not compulsory, it was widely used and it led to a significant fall in deaths from smallpox. Deaths fell even more rapidly when compulsory vaccination was enforced. A century later, in the 1970s, smallpox was wiped out worldwide. G, or rather F. I'm not recording it again, I'll live with that. Vaccination was not enforced for many years. Governments were slow to make vaccination compulsory. Having children vaccinated was voluntary until 1852 because governments did not force people to do it. At that time, the government had not passed any laws to improve health. Even after 1852, the government did little to enforce it until 1871 when people were fined for not having their children vaccinated. Many children that died may have been saved by vaccination. And now we are on to G. Vaccination did not lead to other breakthroughs, or at least not immediately. Vaccination only dealt with one disease and did not help doctors stop other infectious diseases. Vaccination was a one-off discovery, made because of the chance connection between cowpox and smallpox. Jenner did not know exactly how vaccination worked. He did not know, for example, that bacteria caused disease, so he could not use his methods to prevent other diseases. Vaccination was very important, but it did not lead to other discoveries. And lastly, H. Jenner didn't understand how vaccines worked, but others later found out. Later scientists like Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch built on Jenner's ideas to work out how vaccines worked and to develop vaccines that prevented other diseases, such as rabies, which was developed in the later 19th century by Pasteur. So which are significant and which are not? Well, part A suggests that vaccination was of limited significance because there was already a at least partially successful treatment in the form of inoculation. Then opposition to the vaccine. This shows limited significance because people were reluctant to take it up. Then the value of scientific method. This demonstrated again, and it wasn't just Jenner who demonstrated this, that science, inquiry and experiment was a great way of making progress. Also, we've got to recognise that inoculation was never that popular and it had a limited impact on smallpox. After all, smallpox was still really widespread, even though people were getting inoculated. That began to change with Jenner's vaccination, so it means that this is significant. And vaccination saved many lives. I think that speaks for itself. However, it shows a certain amount of limited significance because of the number of people who died because smallpox vaccination was not enforced for many years. And no, I'm not going to get into any debates about whether or not people should be having vaccines. That's a great way of getting, making sure that this video gets taken down or gets completely ruined. Vaccination did not lead to other breakthroughs, which might suggest limited significance. Although in fairness to Jenner, he didn't really have the knowledge and no one really had the knowledge in order to explain why his breakthrough worked. He just knew that it did. But luckily, later people found this out, and it is unlikely that they would have made these discoveries without Jenner's smallpox vaccination coming first. Phew, I think I only really made one mistake in that particular recording. Let's move on before I do anything stupid. Right, I've gone on long enough. Let's summarise with some final points and try and keep this under the 15 minute mark. It's meant to be rapid revision after all. Smallpox was a deadly infectious disease that could kill 30% of the people who got it, and it left others permanently disfigured. Inoculation was attempted using actual smallpox, but it was dangerous. Edward Jenner, though, used his observations that milkmaids didn't get smallpox, but they did get the less dangerous cowpox. He decided to attempt an inoculation with cowpox. This he called a vaccination, after the Latin vacca, meaning cow. He experimented on a, long bo a young boy, James Phipps, and it worked. There was some opposition to Jenner's idea, but in the following years, it was proven to work. By 1979, the smallpox virus was declared eradicated. And let's not forget as well that in the late 19th century, people like Louis Pasteur and Robert Koch built on his ideas to introduce other vaccinations, and they also identified why it worked. Jenner didn't know why his, uh, his vaccination worked, but he did, know, he did know it was safe, and he did know that it was effective, and so it's still an important breakthrough. And who can tell how many lives have been permanently made better or even saved by this invention? So well done, Edward Jenner. This is a really good example of progress, and it shows that our topic is now moving forward into the modern era and the Industrial Revolution. More to come on that soon, but that'll also mean there'll be more challenges. But for now, that's the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope it's been helpful. If it has, drop this video a like. And do please subscribe to the channel for more rapid revision videos. And I'll make a promise, the vast majority of them will be a fair bit more rapid than this one here.
That's all from me. Goodbye and good health.